in the same exact way. The state. The state. The position or the state of any electron within any given atom can be described by using a set of four numbers we call the quantum numbers. Now, the first three quantum numbers can be obtained by solving Schrodinger's time independent three dimensional equation, and the final quantum number is obtained by applying the special theory of relativity as discussed by Albert Einstein. Now, we're not going to go into the detail of the solving process to obtain these four quantum numbers. Instead, we're going to focus on what each one of these quantum numbers actually represents. And let's begin with the principal quantum number given by lowercase n. So this is the first quantum number, and this is the same quantum number that we used when we discussed the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. So basically, the principal quantum number designates the energy of our electron within our atom. And the principal quantum number can take a value that is any positive integer. So basically, n can equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Now, if we know what the principal quantum number is of our electron, and we know what the energy is of the electron found in principal quantum number n equals 1, then we can use this equation to calculate what the energy is of the electron found within the nth principal quantum number. So basically, the first principal quantum number the principal quantum number tells us the energy of our electron within the atom. Now let's move on to the second quantum number. The second quantum number is known as the azimuthal quantum number or the orbital quantum number. And the orbital quantum number is given by lowercase l. And the orbital quantum number is related to the angular momentum given by uppercase l of the electron within that atom. Now, what exactly is the meaning behind the orbital quantum number? So basically, the orbital quantum number describes the shape and the size of our orbit that we're dealing with. It describes the shape and the size of the electron cloud that is produced by that electron. Remember, the electron cloud basically gives us the most probable location of our our electron within our atom. So it gives the shape of the most probable location in which our electron is actually found around that atom. Now what exactly are the values that the orbital quantum number can take? Well, L is readily given by this equation. So basically, if we know what the principal quantum number n is, we can determine the number of orbitals that our atom has. So L is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and all the way up to n minus 1, where once again n is the principal quantum number. For example, if we know that some given atom has three principal quantum numbers, so n is equal to 3, then that means by using this equation we see that our atom has three different orbital quantum numbers. So L can either be equal to 0, 1, or 2, where each one of these quantities represents its own shape and size and type of the orbital, the electron cloud that we are dealing with. For example, L equals zero corresponds to a spherical electron cloud, a spherical orbit, as we'll discuss in a future lecture. Now, earlier we said that the orbital quantum number is related to something known as the angular momentum of our electron. Now, the relationship between the orbital quantum number L and the angular momentum given by uppercase L is given by this equation. So the angular momentum squared is equal to h bar squared multiplied by L multiplied by L plus 1 
where L is the orbital quantum number, H bar is a constant that is related to Planck's constant and L is the angular momentum. So, we see a very important trend. Basically, the principal quantum number determines the number of orbitals we can have, the number of orbital quantum numbers that any atom can have. Now, let's move on to the third quantum number we call the magnetic quantum number that is given by M with the L subscript on the bottom. Now, if the shape, the size, and the time of our orbital, the electron cloud around the atom, is described by the orbital quantum number L, then the orientation and the direction of this orbital, the electron cloud in the three-dimensional space, is given by the magnetic quantum number. So basically, the orbital quantum number describes the type and the size and shape of our uh, orbital, but the magnetic quantum number designates the orientation and direction of our orbital in the three-dimensional space. So the magnetic quantum number tells us the direction of the angular momentum, while the orbital quantum number describes the magnitude of our angular momentum. Now what exactly are the values that the magnetic quantum number can take? So basically, this is the equation that tells us the different values that the magnetic quantum number can take. So in the same way that the principal quantum number determined the number of orbital quantum numbers, the orbital quantum numbers determines the number of magnetic quantum numbers. So ML is equal to negative L to positive L. So to see what that means, let's suppose that for example, an electron is found within orbital L equals 1. So because we know what the orbital quantum number is, because L is equal to 1, we know that the possible magnetic quantum numbers are negative L, 0, and positive L. So basically, if L is equal to 2, then our ML can be negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, and positive 2. Two. So we see that for any given orbital quantum number L, there is a certain specific number, a certain limit to how many magnetic quantum numbers there are. That is, if we know what the orbital quantum number is, if we know what the shape of our orbital is, if we know what the shape of the electron cloud is, then we know there is a limit to the number of orientations that this orbital can take, this orbit can take within the three-dimensional space. So for example, for L equals 1, there are three different orientations. And this is known as the space quantization of the magnetic quantum number. So basically, the fact that any given orbital has a certain number of orientations, has a limit to the number of orientations it can take, this is known as space quantization. And finally, the last and fourth quantum number is known as the spin quantum number. And this is given by M with the S subscript. Now basically, any one electron within any given orbit can have one of two possible spin numbers. So any electron can have two possible spins. It can either have a spin up, in which case the ms is equal to positive one half, or it can have a spin down in which it has an ms that is equal to negative one half. Now in a future lecture, we're going to discuss this spin quantum number and its interpretation in more detail. So, what exactly is the quantum number? So, basically, any electron within any given atom can be described by using four unique quantum numbers, a set of four quantum numbers. The principal quantum number tells us the energy level of our electron. The orbital quantum number tells us the shape of that electron cloud, also known as the orbital. Remember, the electron cloud 
style designates the probability of finding our electron within that specific region of space around our atom. The magnetic quantum number tells us the shape and the orientation of that orbital in three-dimensional space. And the spin quantum number tells us if our electron is spinning up or spinning down.